Hey everyone, it's Nicole Thompson, the Urban School Psychologist. Today I am discussing, is it ADHD or is it bad eating habits that look like ADHD, right? So I, what inspired this topic is I was doing some research and I came across an article where I saw that it was a 42% increase in ADHD diagnoses over the last eight years. And when I read this, hi, Felicia, how are you? When I read this, it was alarming. Like it really raised a red flag. Like why is that, that the ADHD diagnoses have almost doubled in the last eight years? Because I think that's, that says something about um, how we're diagnosing and the things that should be done to stop this peak in um, diagnosing ADHD. Hey, Adriana. Um, so not to get off topic, so ADHD, if, for those that don't know, stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, right? And there's three types of ADHD. There's the hyperactive, um, hyperactivity, um, where I believe that's most common that most people, um, talk about quite often, where the child is always on the go, running around, can't sit down, they're into this, they're into that, they're jumping off the walls, right? Hey, Charles. The second type is the inattentive type, and that's the type that, to me, goes most unnoticed because inattention can literally look like this. And if you don't know any better, hey, Daphne, you would think that, hey, this is a really good student. They're in really, really good student. They're in really good thought. They're really paying attention. But um, and that's why that goes unnoticed a lot. And it's hard to tell if they're paying attention, even if they're staring at the teacher or if they're staring off. So that's not very popular. But it, that is the second type. The third type of ADHD is the combined type meaning that the student or your child has symptoms of hyperactivity and symptoms of inattention, right? So I wanna go over a few things that parents can do to determine whether or not they should get their child evaluated for possibly having ADHD. The first thing is when you're comparing your child's, wish I could share this, I'll, I'll let you share it when I finish it, okay? Hey, I'll get you. When you're comparing your child's um, behavior levels to other children, make sure that you compare those levels to kids their age. And the reason why this is so important is because developmentally, they're in a total different place. You would never want to compare, and I'm just going to throw a number out there, a two-year-old to a six-year-old because developmentally, like they're totally different. Your two, they call it the terrible twos because those two-year-olds are out there. They're exploring. Thank you, Ogechi. They're exploring. They're trying to figure out, hey, why is this in the world? Why is that in the world? What does this do? They're literally all over the place, right? And a five-year-old's attention span is much better than a two-year-old. So you never want to compare different age groups. So if you have a two-year-old, you want to compare your child's behavior levels to other two-year-olds, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing is I want you to pay attention to what you're feeding your child, right? So I always go by the rule of thumb. If everything that you're feeding your child is packaged, you know that it's loaded with sugar and loaded with other unhealthy things that may be causing symptoms of ADHD. So let me give you some examples. Some packaged foods that come to mind straight off of hand is like chips, Doritos, um, cookies, cupcakes, pies, even in terms of drinks, sodas and juices. They're all loaded with sugars and other unhealthy things that could cause a spike in behaviors and make it seem like your child has ADHD. So just for this first part, pay attention to what your child is eating, right? After that, I want you to actually keep a log of what your child is eating. Don't switch anything that you're feeding the child, just simply keep track Hey, Aunt Carol, simply keep track of everything that they're eating. So if you're into um, feeding your child all packaged foods and everything, just keep track of it and be honest with it. And I know right now the kids are in school, so you can't possibly track maybe everything that they're eating because some of the kids get free lunches or whatever, but you still could ask them, 
what they ate for lunch and depending on what they tell you, still write that down. So when you're keeping a log, I want you to keep that log for seven days. And the reason why I say seven days is because if you just keep it for maybe one or two, one of those days could be an off day or a fluke, right? They could just be having a bad day, which causes them to, you know, act out more behaviorally. So on a log, you're tracking what they're eating. The second thing I want you to track is their actual level of of attention and you can do this by using a Likert scale and a Likert scale is just a fancy name for a scale measuring one thing from worst to best right so worst would be number one like these behaviors are out of control I've never seen my kid act um I don't want to say act out but I've never seen my child's level of attention this high that could be one and then five could be my child is acting so good I've never seen their attention levels be this good they're acting like a perfect angel right and then number three would be compared to every other kid their age hey Nelson every other kid their age remember you have to compare them to their age and three would be average two would be in between that one and three where it's bad, but it's not worse. And four would be in between that three and five, where it's great, but not best. Okay. So you're tracking those two things for that whole week. After that whole week, and you have all that data, the behaviors, the, the level of the behaviors and what you've been feeding them, I want you to switch up their diet. So if in the past you've been feeding them nothing but chips and sodas and pies and soda, uh, I say sodas and pies and cookies and things of that sort, this week I want you to feed them more healthy options. Hey, Aaliyah, feed them bananas, pears. Hey, Nydia, apples. Um, and don't give them any juices or any sodas. Just give them water. And again, I want you to track everything that you tracked in that initial week where you were just tracking what they were eating. So track everything that they eat and their levels of behaviors for that second week once you switch their diet. I hope this is making sense. If it's not making sense, um, just drop it in the comments and I'll try to explain it a little better. But to me, in my mind, it makes sense. So that second week, once you switch their diet and you're tracking what they're eating and you're tracking their levels of attention, given a Likert scale, you compare that, and you're doing it for seven days as well, just like the first one. You compare that um, log to their past log. So their past log, remember it would be that this is just collecting what they've been eating and their levels of attention. This current log is you switch their diet, but you're still tracking what they've been eating and their levels of attention. So when you compare those two logs, seven days on this one, seven days on that one, if you see a stark difference, meaning that in this first week, their behaviors were always on the one to two end, and on the second week, their behaviors improved drastically, whereas any, anywhere between the three and five week, that's a dead indicator that the symptoms that they're experiencing is not ADHD and is simply, hey, Takiya, is simply um, a result of what you're feeding them is a result of their diet because many of the foods out here have tons of sugar loaded in them and things of that sort. And it can absolutely affect the way that your children behave and affect the way that their brain develops. So I just wanted to go through that and give that information out in hopes that it'll help someone out there because I know ADHD is always like a hot topic and a lot of parents and educators as well always have that, you know, pressing question like, does this child have ADHD? So those are things to consider and um, document when you're deciding whether or not, hey Reese, when you're deciding whether or not you should have your child evaluated for having ADHD also known as Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Hey, Michelle. So that was it for today. I hope you found this helpful. Um, please feel free to like, love, share the video um, in hopes that this will help parents out because this is just an, an issue that we are facing today. And again, there should be no reason, no reason that the number of diagnoses, hey, Bill, has went up a whopping 42% over the last eight years. Thank you, Agechi. It just doesn't make sense. So if you would like to join our private Facebook group, 
Thank you to Kia, our private Facebook group. You can by hitting the link in the description. It's called Urban School Psychology, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good day.